All right, today we are going to talk about the Holy Spirit and uh, understanding the Holy Spirit. When you think about life, and there are so many people that are confused about who they are, what their identity is, the, our world, and, and really you can take a snapshot anytime. It's not like we're living in some absolutely unique time where depravity is like really, really out there. Depravity has always been really, really out there. And you'll notice that you take a snapshot of front page news at any time in history, and even right now, and you'll notice that people are so confused, they're so worried, they're so fearful, but they're also so proud in their in their arrogant uh, depravity where they're pushing against God's design and dishonoring God. But it's easy to say that and not realize that a lot of Christians are very confused about who God is and about uh, biblical truth. And I think part of the reason is because uh, they have accepted false teaching about the Bible kind of wholesale without checking. Uh, always trust with verification, as one uh, famous uh, politician once said. And then the idea that sometimes we just ignore that, that straightforward words of Scripture. And what I want to do in this time is really bring you to the straightforward claims of Scripture and let them stand and speak to us as they, uh, as they are clearly uh, implanted here in Scripture. So I think I want to do that, uh, and I think we'll be in John 14, 15, and 16, uh, those chapters where Jesus is in the upper room discourse with his disciples. And looking forward to this Sunday, I'm going to be preaching on understanding the Holy Spirit. I'll be anchored uh, to begin with really in John 14, but will then bleed into 15 and 16. And so really this, this uh, devotional and, and really the next one after Sunday, I really want to just, let's just do some Bible reading and let's just look at it and read it and see what it says about the Holy Spirit. And let's remember one thing. These are not just airlifted passages that are like, oh, this is all about the Holy Spirit. It's in the context of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We worship a triune God, uh, the Creator God, who is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, three distinct persons, and God uh, is unified. And so let's just go ahead and start in John 14, verse 15. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper another helper who will, who will do what? Who will be with you forever. So this helper, this advocate, this counselor, another way to translate that, those words, is, is another one. So just like Jesus was our, is our advocate and our counselor and our helper, the Holy Spirit will be when Jesus ascends to the Father. So it says, even the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, and you know that the Spirit is a person in the Godhead when, when he is called the Holy Spirit, okay? But here it's the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So the first observation you would make is that the world, the world that does not believe God, the world that spurns God, the world that rejects God, does not receive God, does not receive the Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth. And it neither sees him nor knows him. But then Jesus says this very significantly, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And he's speaking to believers. He's speaking to his chosen ones. He's speaking to the elect. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And then if you go on to verse 25 in the same chapter, and I'll stop at, after reading these, and then the next time we'll get into chapters 15 and 16. But he says, these things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. So this is before the cross, before the empty tomb and the resurrection and the ascension. But the helper, again, there's that same word again, the advocate, the one that comes alongside, the Holy Spirit, there's a person in the Godhead, whom the Father will send in my name. So all in one verse, you've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. I'm going to be explaining that verse this weekend. That might be one of the most misunderstood verses in the Bible about the Holy Spirit. Many Christians think they know what it means. Many Christians go off base because of misunderstanding that verse. So we're going to stop there and be praying that we would understand the Holy Spirit, that we would understand the Holy Spirit as he is revealed in Scripture, not as is twisted uh, in script, uh, by, by others when people twist Scripture, or, or not, and that we would not ignore the clear, clear statements about the Holy Spirit in the context in which they were given, uh, in scripture. So we're going to uh, continue to learn and grow in this as God saves and sanctifies as he wills and as he conforms us to the image of Christ. 
Uh, let's be anchored in our identity in Christ, uh, joyful in that identity, even as we live in a world that is absolutely uh, you know, bonkers and be- going berserk when it comes to people's identities and people's uh, who they are in life. And it's just always wanting to get attention. Let's put the spotlight on God in the scriptures as is right and true and righteous. So let me pray. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us so many magnificent promises. Thank you that you are with us always. And thank you, Lord, that our hearts uh, don't, do not need to be troubled or afraid because you are with us always and you are Lord over all. And we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.